Hi, welcome to the part one of DP203 certification questions. We are covering all real questions from the past. We are this certification is about Azure Data Engineering. So this is a new series we are starting. If you have not yet subscribed, do so to stay tuned to the latest content. By the way, this is the YouTube handle of this channel. You can look for 600 plus videos on various cloud certifications like AWS, Azure, Google, Snowflake, and Tableau certifications. So do you know what is Synapse? See, this is a data warehouse. A lot of data, okay? Lots of data. So you have a pool. This yellow box is a pool. This pool has this blue database. Inside this database, what will you create? You will create tables. Common sense. Inside database, what exists? Tables, views, stored procedures. So here we are creating tables which will be available as external tables so we have external tables so external tables see in real life i will tell you where we use this see i once built a database synapse analytics database now there were some files in blob storage i have two choice i can directly refer them as external tables so i don't load it in my database i will directly read it second choice is i use one etl or some data loading program like azure data factory and i load the data so the data is there so the moment i load the data it becomes internal to synapse it is no longer external so external means some files which is outside synapse database and it is trying to read see external tables can be two types hadoop and native okay but if you see here serverless sql pool hadoop is not available it is available in native now you might say why we are talking about serverless SQL pool because my friend you see this question here it talks about serverless SQL pool that means only native it is available this native it is available if I go to native external tables I see it supports only two data formats only two data formats which are CSV and Parquet do i see csv here no these options a b c and d there is no csv that's why parquet would be our answer simple so this would be our final answer i hope you understood how we arrived at this answer i have also shown you the documentation also this documentation is from Azure directly from Azure, not my documentation. It is Azure documentation. Now let us look at this question. We will decode this question. See, uh, one thing you remember is like for if you had a table and you want top 100 rows, suppose employee table, then in the from here, this place, we had a we would have used that table name like employee table that we could have used but this is external mind you csv files are external files okay if you want to fire queries on external files then you will have to use open row set simple for external files we have to use open row set in the from clause so this open row set you may pause this and read the documentation 
you can retrieve data from spreadsheets text file in our question this csv file is a text file using sql queries okay i hope you got the concept if there is a command bulk command to import and export large amounts of data between sql server databases and external data files such as csv files that is exactly we have we have csv files right here you see we have csv files external files external to whom external to rajnikanth amitabh bachchan no external to the database so so open row set we have to use here and bulk we have to use here so these are the two answers now how to remember it like i told you sql server anything which is inside database is internal outside like files and etc are external whenever you see external we want to fire queries you have to use open row set and if you are using open row set that means you are reading a file you have to use bulk so that the import export becomes faster that will help you with very efficient and high performance data transfers where is the data transferring from from the csv file to the database so by the way if you have not yet subscribed so please do so this will help you with clearing your concepts and answering in the certification clearing the certifications you will be alerted on any new questions sets that we publish and you can click the join button below or you can go in the link the in the description there is a link use that link in the description become a, a cloud ninja member mind you this certification is uh, relatively advanced so you will get the paid content under cloud ninja membership not under cloud kernel but cloud ninja membership okay now let us look at this question so if you look at these transformations before that first let us understand what is type 1 scd so this is the description of type 1 scd in short i'll tell you suppose you have a table dimension table where we maintain the address of a customer suppose for vodafone customer we maintain the address the address changes now customer move to a new home we simply go and update the address field with the new address but at any time you want to know what was the old address of this person can you know it no this is type 1 so history is not maintained without maintaining historical data that means you don't have old address you only have the latest value simple okay now let us come here it is saying what transformation we should use to detect whether data of a given customer has changed see aggregate why do we use if we want to summarize in sql you know group by function right it aggregates you want to roll up the data then you use in this case a data is not getting rolled up you see these two requirements here the these two requirements data is not getting rolled up similarly if you see surrogate keys okay so this one it is used to generate and assign surrogate key to records in a data flow what is surrogate key suppose you have employee table so what do you do you have employee name but employee name two people can have same name two people can have amita bachchan amita bachchan 
or uh, Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, or two people can also have the name Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. Multiple people can have. So it is not unique. So now what you do is you say, I will generate a unique value, a unique number, and you call that number employee ID. And then you say, okay, this employee ID is unique. That is your surrogate key. See, here in this question, there is no ask of identifying a unique key. And then if you see derived columns, see any value have changed. You can modify existing columns in a data flow. You can add some calculations, etc. This will suffice here because you need to detect whether data has changed. So this would be our answer. Now let us move to this part, perform upsert. Now what is upsert? We heard about insert. We heard about update. What is upsert? So now when we say upsert, that means it will check if that record exists. If it does not exist, it will insert. That is create new record. And what it will do if it exists, it will update. So it is a combination of insert and update. But update will only modify existing record. It will not check if record exists or not. And that is the basic difference between upset and update. So here, if you see, we have three options. Okay, Let us look at assert and cast first. See, assert will help you to validate data integrity and enforce business rules. Data integrity means if you are joining two tables, for example, employee and department, uh, are there marriage points? And to ensure that the integrity of data is there, for example, one department can have many employees. Is that maintained? That is the purpose of assert. Cast is used to typecast a data type. For example, a war chart to date and etc. And this is wrong because question is not asking to typecast it. And question is not asking you to enforce data integrity. Question is saying perform an upsert. That means you are altering a row common sense even if you look at the name alter row common sense it will modify specific columns within the row you can update or change the data okay so this would be our final answer i hope you were able to grasp the concept uh, you may subscribe to this channel you will receive regular alerts on latest certification contents questions and answers see there is a link in the description you can go ahead use that link and opt for cloud ninja membership if you want to access paid content related to this certification this certification is relatively advanced certification so cloud kernel members cannot access it. This is available only for cloud ninja members. So this brings us to the end of part one. This is the YouTube handle and you can look for so many playlists and videos. I think now we are nearing 650 plus videos on AWS, various Azure certifications, Google Cloud certifications, and Snowflake. See you in the next part.